Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 World Tutorial video. In this video we are going to go back and review some of the early videos I created in this series. In the early videos we started out by blinking a LED. Uh, we covered that in two videos uh, back then. We first did it the wrong way and then we came up to how to do it the right way. We also later added doing it at a timer. But if you look at the um, STM32 LED blink page on the STM32 World Wiki, you will see that there is also a section that I have named LL or low level. Now, it's important to understand that the hell libraries that we have been using so far is just one way of doing things. Uh, in fact, hell was only implemented by ST, I think, for seven, eight years ago. Before that, they had some LL low-level libraries, and those low-level libraries are still in existence. So today I am going to do exactly the same, pretty much, that I did in video number four, uh, blinking a LED but using no hell library. And that will be the experiment, experiment I'm going to go through today. Uh, if you don't feel that is relevant for you, uh, feel free to skip this video and jump to another one. Uh, there are plenty to choose from at the moment. So, without further ado, let's look at the original project. That was the one I called Black Pill Blink 2. And essentially, it has a UART write. Uh, so it's writing character out on the UART and then it is cycling around in the main loop and it is toggling a LED pin and it is printing out a statement every second. So it's toggling the pin every half a second and printing out a statement every second. So uh, let's try to run this just to verify that it's still running. And we can see the device there. It is indeed blinking the LED and we can look at the serial output. You can see start blink 2 and then it runs that loop. Uh, and print out a statement every second. So that's pretty much all uh, that is happening in this particular uh, program. So let's clone this uh, program uh, as I have uh, demonstrated a few times before. Copy paste. And we can call it Black Pill Blink 4. So let's close this one, let's close that one and let's open the black pill blink 4 and uh, well, let's first test that that one is, work, uh, is working. You need to rename the IoT file uh, blink 4 there and you need to nuke the debug folder. That's the easiest way. So let's try to build it now. Project, build project. And it certainly builds. Uh, it takes about 10 kilobyte of memory and we can try to execute that. Uh, we need to configure the debug again. I just use default values. And there you go. Go, uh, let's verify the output. It was still called Blink 2, so let's uh, make sure it prints out. This was actually Blink 4. Uh, let's run that. So now it's printing out Blink 4 and just showing the device, it is still blinking. So there you go, now we have the start of a project. So let's try to rip out all the hell stuff and turn this into a low level project. We could also have started a new one, but it's just easier So uh, do this. So let's look at the cube MX. Uh, 
there we go. So, um, well, in this project we have configured the serial port. Uh, boom, 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 down here, user US art uh, 1 to uh, 2 million bit per second and we have configured uh, one GPIO which is the LED pin and that's pretty much all. If we go over to the project manager and go down to advanced settings you can see that that includes three different drivers the UART driver and the GPIO and the clock uh, driver and they are all set to hell. Now it is possible to switch them to low level over here. It will default to running hell but you can switch this to the low level drivers and um, bum, bum, bum. that's pretty much all we need to change in here so let's uh, generate the code using the low level drivers instead of the hell drivers. There you go. Uh, and we now have the project uh, started up. Now it will not build at the moment because we have all these hell UR transmit and down here we have the hell uh, hell GPIO toggle pin. So we need to replace all that with uh, calls to the low level libraries. So let's uh, briefly go through that. First of all, the right. Now I'm using the right, I'm, I'm overriding the right uh, function because that one can take a complete string. But in this case, it is simpler because in in the low level library, we can only send one character at the time. It doesn't have a function to sell, send a string. So it's easier to override uh, the IO put char, uh, which basically handles one character at the time. And what I'm doing here is I'm waiting until whatever character was transmitted last has been fully transmitted. And then I would send the data. We can also do that the other way around. It doesn't really change much. Um, and that's it. We also have another function uh, down here to uh, toggle the pin, we can delete the hell call. Uh, fortunately, the LL libraries have one that operates pretty much exactly the same way. So we can call the LL GPIO toggle pin uh, function instead. Now it should actually build. Uh, let's see if we can build the project. It did not. What is it complaining about? Okay, yes, of course, because UVTIC is part of a hell library, uh, the, the timer that runs, so we have to implement that uh, manually. The first thing that we need to do is we need to enable the SysTech, and we can do that up here before we print out. We can enable that SysTech variable, and you will see that in the interrupt code, which is bum 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 source here we can see that it actually generates a handler for the source tag it just doesn't do anything in that handler and that way we actually have to implement that ourselves so we will increase a SysTech variable down here now it is also not declared the SysTech variable so let's do that up under private variable, let's do a, we can call it a IO uh, that makes it volatile, uh, UV tick. It will start by being zero since it's a global variable. So that is not a problem. Let's uh, also declare that in the header file. So we go into the header file here. Strangely enough, doesn't really have a place to, but we can do that here and declare it extern. And now we need to include this header in our main file. So uh, up, it's actually also, oh, okay. We need to include that in our 
main as well to see that variable. So there we go. So now it should compile project build project and it builds and we can see over here it shaved about two and a half kilobyte of code off our code to do it with the hell uh, with the low level library it should be said that the hell libraries are typically using the low level libraries so the low level libraries will pretty much always be there uh, if you're using cubemx to generate your code uh, so now we have enabled the interrupt. We are handling, um, let's go back to the source. We are handling the UV tick in the SysTech handler. We are increasing UV tick every time. So now it should pretty much run exactly like it did before. So let's look at the, let's uh, fire up the device, show the device here, and let's try to flash it. And there you go, it is flashing. Let's look at the output from the cell port, which we have there. So there you go. So this is pretty much uh, implementing exactly the func same functionality we had in Blink 2, but using none of the hell libraries. Uh, so as you can see, it's not that complicated to use uh, low-level libraries in, uh, in hell. Um, I personally, uh, I prefer the hell libraries, but it, it, it's usually a little more troublesome to use the, the, the low-level libraries. I mean, we need to do stuff like this is typically handled by the hell libraries uh, and ST probably, hopefully, have some better programmers than I am, so, uh, well, why not use it if the functionality is there? However, it is possible. Now, I'm probably going to do a Black Pill Blink 5, where I'm going completely medieval and uh, go to bare metal, uh, because what, what you have to realize uh, when you're doing this is, let's look at, for example, what is a you are transmit actually doing well, all it's doing pretty much is it throws a value into a register and well we can do that completely manually without using any uh, libraries at all we can just uh, if we know where that you are the x um, structure is in in the memory space and that is clearly documented in the reference manual uh, then we could do this without using any library at all. Uh, just throw that variable in. Uh, we showed that in an earlier video we were doing, uh, what was it, uh, hang on. Uh, I lost that. Oh, I lost my browser. of a new browser. Oh, it must have crashed. Okay. Uh, what did I want to do? I wanted to show, yeah, in an earlier video, if we go into the tutorial videos, uh, I can't remember which one it was, but we were doing um, low-level access to peripheral well, well. Tutorial video number 12 show how to do the low level access to peripherals. And it is, of course, entirely possible not even to use the low level libraries, but just do. And that would probably shave off another 5 kilo or so of, of this size. However, uh, well, I don't know how long you want to go. Anyway, uh, as usual, uh, I, I do appreciate if you like and subscribe, or if you don't like this video at all, please tell me why, and uh, that will uh, enable me to do better in the future. And as usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.